guys, what's up guys and welcome to, well, draft analysis in the lower tier Pokemon of the UBL. I am very happy to come back to UBL and draft league in general and having a lower tier draft was kind of cool. Um, a lot of things going on that I had to reconsider and uh, I ended up with a pretty decent draft I think. There were a lot of hiccups, you know, as general you get sniped, uh, those things can't really get avoided. But overall, I think the contrast of my team got good enough, <laughs> to, to be honest. Uh, so, can I go round by round my thoughts behind them? And uh, it's not like it's in UPU Pokemon, rather, it's defined by usage by league, which means there are some, I shouldn't say imbalances, but rather, the very, very strong Pokemon that still are allowed, and you know. Of course, my, my weak book was actually doing great things, and uh, I actually had the pleasure of getting Scyther in my first round. I was aiming towards Tauros, and um, it's probably the best Pokemon to get drafted. Tauros is absolute a beast in this type of environment, but getting Scyther is definitely not bad. With the buff disintegration of Dual Wing Beat, and um, actually just overall thanks to Heavy Duty Boots, it's incre incredibly versatile. There really aren't that many things that check it, and... Uh, for a lower tier where the speed tier is kind of kind of rough, um, Scyther is usually getting first blood on a lot of things, and it's not far off getting just a sword stance and pretty much wrapping up games naturally. So I'm definitely looking forward to using it as I think it's a, just overall very good. Um, contrast to that, I actually decided to I wanted to get Sock in my next round, so it, it clearly got sniped. We got hit on top instead, and. Just to have this said, like Hypnotop is not a bad mod. While I don't personally like it, I think it strains somewhat when it comes to team building. Uh, it got a decent buff decent range with triple axle, and it actually has you know access to bulk up and whatnot. In contrast, to actually having something like bolt priorities and bullet punch, mag punch, and technician. So and triple axle, then you move for it. So overall, it's actually a really good Pokemon. It can do a lot of things in the league. It's not a your your standard. Rep is you can do things, and quite frankly, I kind of enjoy whatever it can perform. Uh, so that said, uh, I followed that up with actually getting Jolteon, and got Jolteon for one reason. While inherently a bad Pokemon by all means of <laughs> accentuations, honestly, uh, Jolteon has one really good thing going in a lower tier environment, and that is owning the speed tier. And I wanted, if I have in sight or a speedy U-turn, and I want a speedy Volt Switcher too, and Jolteon feels probably the best one with that. Um, there are contrasting moves or mons that are actually still draftable in um, Rotom um, Frost, which definitely is a Pokemon I was considering even back then. But Jolteon was, was on a cheap side, and I really think it performs well in this type of environment, though uh, clearly you guys have to see whether or not it does that, and clearly I, I myself too. By the way, I'm sorry I'm joining, I'm actually recording this in <laughs> late at night. I realize we're gonna have a draft league analysis uploaded any day now, and I haven't done anything, so it's kinda <laughs> stressing this pop through. So sorry about that. And next Pokemon to get up was actually Pokemon was considering drafting no matter what, and that was Aurora's. Now, Initially, I regretted this decision this, the second I did it, but at the same time, it is Aurora's, and there are so many mods not liking the combination of Free Stray in general, and Aurora's is probably the best one at that. Uh, contrast that with possible Aurora Veil, and um, it could work out really nicely. Um, I'm not worried about using it, I think it has issues, and I think those issues are more entitled or hard to capitalize on depending on the matchups but at the same time my opponent doesn't make that very same call and it actually might be very favorable of having Aurora's in my team as it just is extremely dangerous plus weather ball uh, giving Jolteon the option of having an ice move is probably all I need and it makes sense to get it even though like I said kind of regret it at the same time and next one I was actually pick up was uh, Galarian Rapidash I, I want to say it's the best available fairy type, though then again, fairy types aren't necessarily all that good in the lower tiers, but I have yet to get this one right, and I really want to try it out. I think it can be very good versus certain matchups, and I think it has 
you know, good speed here, good offensive stats to perform really well. I haven't tried it enough to say whether or not it's good, but I definitely see its merits and um, it has a you know good defensive type in and I think that will help it a whole lot. Um, and just, like I said, good speedster. You know, it's, as of already, I have a very speedy team, but don't worry, I'll, I'll fix that in a second. <laughs> uh, and afterwards, I followed that up with Fracture. Fracture is actually a very incredible Pokemon this generation, mainly because of Soul Stance and Scale Shot. Uh, Fracture got first impression, of course, with Hexer. Hexer's getting the, the better of the two, but Hexer's is, while the big brother and stronger, Fracture, Fracture has a, actually the same type of Moopool. They really aren't that different besides the insane <laughs> damage output that is in Hexer's, but Fracture has a good stance distribution. It's a very high attack set, content that with Dragon Dance, like I said, Scale Shot and Soul Stance, and you got a very nasty mon to deal with. Um, and I've seen common sets with using just choice ban and just spam offensive capable moves and it's probably something I will do most of the time with Fracture as it is just an absolute madness to deal with. But it's just very good Pokemon and uh, nothing to it. And I followed that up with Stunfist, the Galarian form, yes. I drafted this mom before in the, you know, um, a, a real league, I was gonna say, but a league with all mods available and actually performed really well. Galarian Stun Fisk is not that bad. The steel and ground typing is a very good contrasting the defensive typing and access to the likes of Counter, Earthquake, Stone Edge. It's basically the worst steel leagues in many ways. <laughs> Damn shame it lacks toxic to be honest, because things the typing allows it to actually work really well. But um, nothing to it. It's a good just Defensive mod. Huh, I'm really sorry about this. Um, and I, I, I felt comfortable getting it. Uh, and I was following that up afterwards with um, Kangaskhan. Now, Kangaskhan was actually a mistake. Um, did not counter the tiers right. I thought it was on the cheaper side. Which screwed up probably my wrap up. But at the same time, Kangaskhan is not that bad. Uh, extremely defensive with scrapping and whatnot is actually very formidable this generation as you know it just performs very well. Uh, Kangaskhan is a Pokemon I think most people forget about as it is in the shadows of both Taurus and in, to an extent Buffalant but um, I, I am definitely feeling this one I think it's an incredible asset to the team and I'm like I said not necessarily all I worried um, and I followed up with Cramorant because I screwed up the, <laughs> everything. But Cramorant at the same time here, not bad. Lacks Hurricane and Flip Turn, which definitely sucks, but has, you know, it's weird gulp missile thinking about and has Hurricane, has Surf Ice Beam. It has all the asses of man time. It even has Root, so it can feel a defensive role, though it isn't necessarily all that bulky. But yeah. It is a second second there the um, defogger and it definitely will help me out a whole lot so very natural Pokemon to get I think is incredible and uh, I have yet I have of course to prove that that's a possibility um, it really was all I went into it like I needed a good defensive water type and the ones available while good was not Cramorant <laughs> that was my logic behind that call also Cramorant you no know, it has base 85 speed which inherently just makes it a very speedy defensive Pokemon, and that in its own right makes Cramorant awesome. So I kind of just want to have that out there. Uh, and the last Pokemon for me to get was actually Tendula. Now, I actually wanted Vileplume, and that's, I, wa I want to mention that because Kangaskhan screwed that over, but Vileplume was on my shit list of mods I want to get, as a, it's a very good defensive Pokemon. Not taking away whatever Tendula can do, because Tendula can do just about the same, if not even better with the Violites, it's just that it doesn't... Um, the defensive typing is just not as well-rounded. That said, Tendula with Regenerator, yeah, you fuck it, it's a great mon. It does what, pretty much what Tangrove does bes besides Earthquake, and that is quite a lot. So Tendula is definitely formidable, and... Um, I might drop it later on if my counters get Valplum down the line, but that is if I get it and if it makes sense for me to kind of draft it. It depends on my few, my few first games really how I feel about the team. But overall, like when I look at my team, I realize that you know, like I said already, it's a speedy team. But just having it in front of me, yeah, it's a fucking speedy. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, look at this. We got a Fezzmon, Jolteon 130, and then we got two of 105 in Rapidash and Scyther, followed up by 19 Kangaskhan, then 85 with Cramorant. Uh, just already there, like, I have five Pokemon at just about 80 in base speed. And then, yeah, it gets lower, but not by a lot, with Hitmontop at 70, Tangela at 60, Aurora's at 58. Yeah, they kind of kind of touch each other, you know, they're fresh to 67 too. And then, Stun is 32. I, I guess if I had to say something, I'd probably say that, you know, I don't have slow enough Pokemon to force base 50 and 40 months to perform with uh, no positive nature but besides that i think i pressure my opponents here naturally to consider our speeding certain months if they can't they won't and, <laughs> and that's a contrast you don't want to have and uh, i feel good about this team i i believe they can perform the way i want to and if they struggle they're gonna struggle versus certain like matchups, like I think I don't believe I deal that well with fighting, I don't believe I deal that well with ice, but then at the same time, very few team does. So I don't believe that should be a contrasting response. And I have two floaters, which means fighting has, you know, something to reevaluate as it's switching. Um, but that's it. I hope you guys, of course, support the Scandinavian Stavlins this season. I hope to be able to have this, these type of games active as well as my wi-fi games as i will now be able to record more games finally you know you know regular games regular content regular me anyway guys as always thank you for watching make sure to check out the other ones which is going to be linked down below like i said lower tier games and the game they can be very interesting and i think the thought process of battling other lower tier teams is gonna be some really cool content and i'm kind of excited for it so anyway, as always guys, thank you for watching and have a great everyone. Take care.